Okay. Yeah. It's going to be slow. I guess so. Oh, uh, I was doing this motion one. This is done by AutoCAD. But um, it's coming up out of the page and forward. It's a rotating wave. And forget it. You saw it. We've got to keep the five minutes. That's fine. We'll go to the next ones. But that, those are the, the veins of the rotating wave, um, which is a photon brought into, brought into rotation. And, okay, this page is big. It's a propeller. Can you scroll down? No? Anyway, the veins extend out to infinity, if you will, and they, the, the, the fields, of course, spread out and, and get less. That's it. There you go. Okay, it's from the right wave theory. So I'll go through that first, and then I'll show you maybe potential drives. And they're based on a propeller system because it's a rotating wave. Uh, okay, the first one is, of course, the translational wave photon, if you will, and carry on to the next one. And you'll notice the humps there. So in the photon, um, it, it, it comes into the positron, actually electron and positron over here. Um, and it's all conserved in, in momentum and charge, all that. So go to the next. So we've got electron and a positron. These are rotating waves from plan, top plan view, and so I guess the next slides, you. I could even draw them quick, but they're more important. But okay, I'll use my hand, I don't care. But you've got a, a rotating wave that is relatively stationary, okay? You see my hands doing this? Kick it in motion, and the planar wave fronts have to go at an angle in order to keep the electric and the magnetic field, right angles, direction of motion. So you get length contraction, and it carves a helical through space. So that helical at C takes a longer time, and that's time dilation. Are we scrolling down? Um, and then you can calculate the mass increase. Okay. Um, keep going, keep going. Okay, uh, this is a stationary. Uh, relatively stationary, rotating wave. It's got an axis of spin, it's got a, a magnetic <coughs> lines coming back, and uh, motion, just rotation, and uh, electric field you don't see here, but it's coming in. Next, next one. In motion, that's what I was just explaining. And next one. And then if we look at those planar wave fronts at angles, they get length contraction. And next one. Okay. Oh, it's not working. It's, it's Adobe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, this is, you just saw the picture, again, of the, the thing coming out of the, the page. It's the same form that you just saw in the, the, the picture below, before. This is the kind of electromagnetic gravity. If you've got these rotating waves and you have an incidental wave on it, it will bend that wave, I think, just as a photon is bent around the sun. Okay, so these test Huygens wavelets passing will be bent, and that interaction will give up some energy, and it will lead to space expansion. Keep talking, Bill. I got to fix this. You got to fix. Okay. Anyway, from going to that simple one to to a, a swarm of all kinds of particles having rotation, um, and I'm just using the electron. For the, for the example, but um, that swarm will then carve out a, a, a mass and uh, light will be bent around it. And since the other wavicles or rotating waves are ma uh, made of mass or, or contribute mass by uh, kinetic energy in rotation, then um, they will be gravitated towards the other mass, okay? That's the kind of principle of gravity. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay, time dilation. Okay. Well, that, yeah, fine, go ahead. That was equivalence, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. The equivalence is just taking the bending of the, the rotating wave to a swarm, uh, basically bending all kinds of waves of 
uh, another particle, and then it, 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 it's, it's equivalent. Anyway, let's move on. That's, I didn't want to spend much time on that. This is a, a cylindrical condition of the rotating wave, which would just be going in a constant motion. And um, this is a deformation uh, caused by the, uh, what I call the fifth vector. And I think it relates to the fifth dimension of Kaluza. And I can show the things on it. Uh, the equations are all derived. But we're not going to spend time doing that. Next one. So this is, well, that's, that's fine. Well, is that good? Okay. Yeah. That, I've called C5 for the fifth and C4 for the normal. And we get um, this fifth VT adding to the C4 light line of a cylindrical condition, rel special relativity, to deform it and get us to general theory. Um, you might as well go to the next one. Okay, well, this is the RKL. I said it, have, it would have to be able to derive the RKL, and that's the GKL, from this model. And you guys can read it later, but basically just set it up. And then I use this as a reinterpreted math, partial derivatives, and uh, there's speed of, uh, the light line is perpendicular to the, the radius of curvature, and you get a GKL derived that is somewhat like the TKL but it should be the same form. Okay, next. That's a cylindrical condition of a, a rotor of a wave front wrapping around. And go to the next one. And this is where the rotor is decreasing in, in size as the, uh, the energy increases. Um, so that is like a cone, um, but it's actually kind of tangential to a flute, if you will. Um, so that then now we have intrinsic curvature, but this is just a tangent to that. Next. Okay, well, th you don't want to go through all this. We know what Theodore Kaluza did. Um, the GKL derivation needs the VT, the fifth vector. Um, I assumed, I gathered the VT is most likely Kaluza um, because the electromagnetic energy adds the curvature. Um, these guys, the Kim father-son team from Korea exactly a year ago, actually came up with, with a standard model with the same vectors showing up. So that was inspiring. Next. Okay, the equations of motion um, and, and the, well, anyway, the, the Lorentz force. And it's easy to find that the, the fifth, the vector, um, the, the derivation of it uh, relates to the, uh, sorry, Kaluza, the force. Um, we get the intuitive right-hand rule of thumb, uh, comparative strengths, EM's direct, gravity is slight and indirect. Next. Uh, Lance Williams, we, we talked about that, and that's why I was, I'm here, I'm interested. Rotating waves could be EM space propeller, Beacons of light allowing communication across stellar distances because, of course, the rotating wave has to go faster than the speed of light at a certain radius. So we get superluminal, luminal, and subluminal, but it's going out on a, on a straight line. Okay, and Paul M. Dirac actually kind of hinted at things. De Broglie certainly did. But what it's saying is space and time are not connected. It's more from the rotation of a wave. Okay, next. Okay. To test this, if that's going to work, I thought, um, how about a, a, a vacuum ball, an axis going through it, and then the veins um, replicated in a, a large model. And these minus signs indicate the charge on that. Increase the charge, and it might roll forward. So that becomes like a, a, a jet, <laughs> rather propeller, uh, rather than um, you know, the, uh, the, the Mach effect. It's really a creating a field that's going to be rotating and drawing it forward. And that's the transmission through space. Next one. Uh, because there's so many moving parts, I just thought another one, and I, I can't quite explain this, but it's a possibility. Uh, there's the length of contraction shown um, and the mass increase and all that. Anyway, that's it. Bill? Yep. Is there an experiment that you would propose for your theory? Well, the first experiment, if you go back, 
would be that one. I don't know, it's a lot of mechanical parts there, so you might get something, but it has to be built. So yeah, it could be nice. Can you tell us, is the, you said you increased the charge, so does those X plates start to rotate? Well, by increasing the charge, you increase the field strength. And it's, if you've got it rotating already, then you're going to increase that field strength and it might pull forward. Um, if you in, keep this car uh, charged same and increase the rotation of it on that axis, it will pull forward. So that's the idea. Are there any sub parts of that you could test ahead of time to make sure that what you put in there is actually going to do what you hope it does? Well, not really. I mean, it's, you could have one vein maybe, but I don't think so. But I mean, even if a vein does what you hope it, hope it does, you know, is there a way to test that outside of that device? Mm. I haven't, I've, only, I've only thought of this idea, frankly. And if there's another one that's simply, yes, uh, sure. I'm wondering if you took a helical backfire antenna, which will give you a helical spin within an electromagnetic wave, and put it in a resonating cavity. Right. so that you'd end up getting that action within a cavity and you could also increase the effect by increasing the cue of that cavity um, but you may not see something now I know they've done uh, I know they've done resonating cavities with you know, uh, probes in them that would sit there and resonate your waves back and forth you know, standing waves but I don't know if anybody's ever tested anything where you put a helical antenna like a backfire helical a spinning wave and also get uh, uh, higher Q. That could be something that would be easier than that mechanical. Yeah. Doesn't a helicon plasma generator do that? Like yes. A yes. Well, yes. But, which, but the, for what he's trying to do, in, because he's trying to get an angled field there mm -hmm. for the prop propeller, what he's probably going to have to do is a cross polarized. Uh, Inable antennas. So he's, he's got two inputs and then he can control the face to generate the, the blade. Yeah, I mean, the, the key thing here is that the electric and the magnetic field got to be right angles to the direction of those veins. And that's what would push us forward. The, assuming, of course, there's no electric field affecting this, of course. What, what I'm thinking here is the energy is injected into that model and it does its thing. And that's it's because it's being transmitted through space. Just as I walk around here, I'm being transmitted through space. And I think that's about all I've, I've got to. Bill, yes. you have, you're, you're suggesting uh, just injecting energy into your device there. Yeah. Do you have to condition that energy in any way so that you don't get a back, you know, the thing starts backing yeah. up instead of going forward or? No, I, I don't know the engineering of it. All I've, come up with is the initiation of a concept. Okay. okay. And I've had that idea for years, frankly, <laughs> because I, I wondered how can I test it? And then I said, gee, maybe it could be a propeller in vacuum, right? And it basically transmitted through itself through space. Anyway. Very good. Continue this stuff at the yeah. over dinner. So we can wrap. Thank you very much.